State management is used in every single successful app out there. If you're going to build something a little bit more complex than just some demo application, you're gonna to have to need to use some sort of state management. My goal for this video is to explain state management as simply as I can, so hopefully by the end, you know exactly what state is, what state management is, and what state management packages are, and what they are used for. And if you don't, I don't know, man. So the very first thing we need to understand about state management is what state is. And just to make it simple and straightforward, state is just data, but not all data is state. There's a lot of information and data you use within an application, but depending on what you're building, a lot of times that data won't need to be managed. But a side note I wanted to mention, if you're building a big application, it probably should be managed and that's called error handling. So in this video, we're gonna be showcasing three examples. There's gonna be one showcasing what state is, another one showing how to do state management with only Flutter itself, and a third one showing how to do state management using Riverpod. So this is an application that I hope you are pretty familiar with. It's the basic countering application that every Flutter app starts with. So let's first start off by commenting out this increment counter. And here we'll have a problem as well. Let's just solve that like this. So if we reload, you just have zero, nothing counts up. There's nothing really happening here. But this variable right here, this is our state of the application. The state is what takes it and determines the data that's being displayed to the user. In this case, it's just zero. It doesn't change. Very boring application. And now let's undo a couple things. And before we get to set state, let's just increment a counter like this. So if we refresh, you'll see the same thing. Nothing's happening to that zero. But here, our state is technically being managed or updated and or something like that. If you put a breakpoint over here, you click, you'll see the counter is not zero. We're actually at the counter value of five. So this, this is technically your state being managed, but this points out a very important part of what state management is and it does two things. First, it gives you a way to update the data. In this case, we have a function that's up. In this case, we have an interface that's helping us update our state variable, which is this counter. But the second and very crucial part of state management, at least within Flutter, is that it needs to let the UI know that it's being updated so that the UI can update with our values. Now we undo a little bit more of the code and we get back this set state that we have. So this is the very simplest state management that you can do within Flutter. And actually, if you read the description, it explains it to you a little bit here. Whenever you change the internal state of an object, so our counter is our state, we're changing it within this function, then calling set state notifies the framework that an internal state of this object has changed in a way that might impact the user interface in this subtree, which causes the framework to schedule a build for this state object. So this is the simplest state management that you can have within a Flutter. So hopefully you understand what state is and why you need state management. But then you've probably seen a lot of state management packages and people going crazy about which state management package is the best, which one they should use. But why do you need any state management package at all? So this counter is very simple, right? We're not doing much here. But sometimes in applications that are a little bit bigger, you need to have state and data that is consistent throughout the whole application. You need to be using it in multiple different places need to be able to update it from multiple different places and need the UI to be reflected in multiple different places. It becomes this big network of data and managing it and you need a nice and simple way for that to be done throughout the application. And since it's such a big part of almost every successful application, every app that's a little bit bigger than a demo, that's why it's such a heated topic. And before I show you how to do it with only Flutter, I think we should jump into one of my favorite state management packages and that's Pod. Now it doesn't really matter which state management package you use, they all pretty much do the same thing and that's manage the state of your application. I wanna showcase the package way first because it is a little bit simpler than doing it with just Flutter and there's a reason they exist is because it just makes life easier. Now of course, since I'm using Riverpod, there'll be some Riverpod specific syntax, but I won't be diving too deep into that and hopefully just explain to you the grand scheme of things of how state management works. And if you want to learn about any of these packages specifically, I have videos on most of them. So you go a little bit deeper on those videos at my channel. But now to have your own state management solution, you need to have a central place where all your state is stored and held in, in an organized way. So for this example, we're gonna be using this thing called the state notifier, which just kind of notifies other people that the state has changed. That's the very basic of it. And in here, we're gonna have a way to update that state to the next iteration. So let's say your applications are a little bit bigger, right? You're not just working on a little counter application. You'd probably have 
a separate file for UI, a separate file for states, and that way you can make sure your data is organized and all that type of stuff. Now we get into some river pod specifics, but you need this thing called a provider. And the state notifier provider gives access to the rest of your application of this counter notifier class that you have. So if you manage the state, maybe in some separate file, in this case, you're doing it in the same file, and this gives the rest of your application access to it. Now within our user interface, we can use the verb pod logic and watch for these changes. The first one is we're watching for the actual counter. The second one is access to the whole class itself. So we can use the function and then we just display the counter and we can use a counter notifier dot add to increment it. And if we go to the verb pod one, there you go. Everything works the same. It's just a different way to write it. And when your app gets bigger and more complex and there's more states than just a little counter, this becomes very useful and very nice to have. Now, last part, you could do this all without really using a package either. Verbpod just makes it a little bit easier for you to do. And just like the last one, we need to create a state. It could be in a different file. It could be in the same file. If it's a small thing, you can manage that for your own priors, however you need. So we define our state in a very similar way that we did in the Verbpod example. And here we create an instance of that counter notifier. So an instance of that class that we can use throughout the rest of the application. And that reminded me of one more thing I actually forgot during the Verbpod example. The way the rest of your app gets access to it is because at the very beginning we added a thing called a provider scope. So we wrapped our whole application in the provider scope and everything within that application has access to those providers. With our state, so there's this thing called inherited widget. And let's say you create this counter notifier, you can put it in an inherited widget and then your whole application will have access to that. It gets a little bit more complicated, but if you want to see an example of me using state management without a state management package, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to make a video about that. But here, we're just gonna define it here. You can define it in a separate file and then pass it in if you want, uh, wherever you want to do with this class, as long as you have it defined somewhere. And then what we could do with this scaffold is we can wrap it in this thing called a value listenable builder. Did I spell that right? It did. So the thing we're gonna listen to is that counter here. And then we're gonna build out the rest of our application with that. Within our builder, we get the actual value that is an integer from this counter. So this value we're notifying is of type int. And so this value is the actual counter value. So we do that. We have the actual counter state that we use. So here we want to do counter dot add. There we go. So flutter state, we have our state being incremented here. We can put a breakpoint there and it gets incremented. We can put a breakpoint. It's added in into a separate state object, and then your UI gets updated whenever those things change. So to break it down, Verbpod and other state management packages make this process a lot easier. There's one big step that we don't have here is to add an inherited widget and to basically be able to use it throughout the app. And there's just a lot of stuff you need to deal with and a lot of little corner cases that you need to deal with, which are all thought up of in the Verbapod package and many other packages. If you want that more complex example, leave a comment and I've been building something out like that on Twitch. So go check me out there. And if you wanna go deeper into what Riverpod does and how to really use Riverpod to the max, there's a video on the screen right now.